Another piece that can help us graph rational functions is finding the zeros. So the way we find zeros um, of a rational function is that they occur where the denominator, after accounting for holes, you always do holes first, is equal to zero. Not the denominator, where the numerator, come on, sorry, where the numerator is equal to zero. But you got to reduce first and then determine it because the whole supersedes anything else, okay? Because the function cannot be defined if it both makes the numerator and the denominator equal to zero because the denominator equaling zero is not defined, okay? Can a function intersect a vertical asymptote? Explain. Pause the video and try to answer this on your own first. No, since vertical asymptotes happen where the function is undefined, that means there will be no values there. If something is undefined, it can't have points plotted there. Can a function intersect a non-vertical asymptote? Pause the video, try and answer. Yes, since non-vertical asymptotes describe how the function behaves at the ends of the function as x approaches either positive or negative infinity. So the function can exist and therefore intersect at a point on the asymptote. So in this case, the points are defined out there. It's just like we're talking about how the function behaves, not that it's not allowed to be here at all. That's the difference between a vertical and a non-vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptotes, function cannot exist here. That's what this means, okay? or rational function cannot exist here, I should say. How would you then find the intersection of the function and the non-vertical asymptote? That is the next question. Pause it, try and answer it, and then come back. We set the asymptote equal to the function itself. So in other words, we're basically solving a system. Solve a system where the function itself and the asymptote is the two parts of the system that we're trying to solve. All right, next we're gonna try some experiments.